We talked in the previous segment about the potential for a policy mistake from the Federal Reserve. Is that policy mistake based on weakness in the economy and where do you see that weakness currently? Okay, well, yeah, well, the economy is actually fundamentally weak. I, I could not believe the number of people talking about the second quarter snapback and it was just basically reported in the data instead of analyzing it. Uh, there were two non-recurring factors in there. One was the drawdown of the savings rate. The savings rate's down close to a cycle low. And then we had uh, the, the, the last gasp, really, in terms of the bounce back we had in energy-related capital spending. You strip those two things out, GDP growth was 1%. The underlying trend in the U.S. economy is basically 1% to 2%, and I don't see where the momentum's coming from. We're seeing uh, the big drivers for most of the cycle, which was credit-driven and autos and housing, uh, they're clearly rolling over. Uh, you know, you can argue, I'm sure that Jim, Jim's done work on this in terms of deregulation helping out capital investment, but at the same time, we have uncertainty over tax reform. Who's going to put capital to work? if you don't know what your tax structure is going to look like. And on top of that, this is very interesting, by the way, as it relates to Canada, uh, is the statement that uh, the Bank of Canada put out a couple of weeks ago, where even though they raised interest rates, one of the things they put in there, uh, in terms of telling the market we're going to cap this thing very soon, was the impact interest rate increases are going to have on debt-laden balance sheets. Mm -hmm. Well, you're taking a look at the overall U.S. system, the non-financial debt, households, business, governments, is 250% of GDP. Do you know that the debt ratio in the U.S., for all the talk about deleveraging, deleveraging only took place in the mortgage market. The debt-GDP ratio writ large is hard today mm. than it was at the peak of the last cycle. And so basically every basis point increase that the Fed raises interest rates is going to compound a debt interest problem, especially, by the way, in the corporate sector. You know, we talked about what's driving the equity market. A lot of it was basically boring money buying back your stock. Well, all of a sudden, we take a look at these debt-heavy corporate balance sheets, as interest rates go up, uh, what's that, especially at the short end of the yield curve, what's that going to do with the debt service costs comes at the expense yeah. of capital spending. Well, I should point out that I'm going to channel uh, Sean Darby over at Jeffries. So his bullish indicator is in the Philly Fed, looking at the CapEx uh, forecast six months out, and that's still really high. It's around 39. So, Jim, is there a CapEx regulatory positive story to be had? Yeah, I think that there's there's two things that would support the market. I agree with David with some of the problems, but one of them is regulatory relief. The uh, Competitive Enterprise Institute in Washington said that the average company spends more money complying with regulations than they do paying taxes. And by most measures, we have had more regulatory rollback this year than any year in history. And so we've seen a huge relief from corporations. And that might be playing into the second number. We've had S&P 500 earnings growth plus 10% for two quarters in a row. And we're expecting not 10% in the third quarter, but a good high single digit number. So yeah, the economy by measures of GDP are slow, but the, the corporate balance sheets, I mean, the corporate income statements are doing very well too, because we're seeing some real good earnings growth right now.